Hello, and welcome to the video. Today we're talking about what's on my iPad. This is a 5th generation iPad Pro in the 12.9 inch size, currently running OS 17. Personally, I mostly use my iPad at home, and mostly in the kitchen to watch YouTube and look at my recipes while cooking. Occasionally, I'll use it for specific tasks while working from home. I do also use it while traveling, in place of a laptop or other computer. And while traveling, I'll use it just to keep up with light work and organize my photos and videos from the trip. Because I have two specific use cases for my iPad, I use two focus modes to organize it. Do not disturb for home use and work focus for working and traveling. I'll get into the specifics of both modes, but first I want to talk about the accessories I use. The first one I want to mention is a screen protector from Paperlike, who is also the sponsor of today's video. The Paperlike screen protector makes it feel like you're writing with pencil on paper while using the Apple Pencil. It also helps reduce glare and fingerprints. The papery feeling is achieved using nano dots that are distributed across the screen protector, which create resistance when dragging the Apple Pencil across the surface. Paperlike 2.1 technology is unique because it uses new material composites that ensure the nano dots are spread more evenly across the surface, creating a more natural feel while maintaining visual clarity. The screen protector is durable and can handle the added stress that comes from writing and drawing directly on the product. It is also designed with artists in mind with a focus on keeping the image on screen sharp and crisp, which is what makes this screen protector my personal favorite to use. If you want to check out the performance benefits of Paperlike for yourself, please do so through the link in this video description to help support this channel. They also offer a 100-day satisfaction guarantee. Thank you to Paperlike for sponsoring this video. My next favorite tool is the Apple Pencil. I love the ability to handwrite on my mood boards and even in my Notion to-do lists. This also comes in handy for editing photos on the iPad. I recently learned how to use Scribble, which is an iPad feature that turns your handwriting into type automatically. It works in any typing field in any application. I also got this little stand for the Apple Pencil from Amazon. I have this plain white case on my iPad to protect it from scratches while it's in my bag or when I set it on a table. This case is really thin and will not be effective against dropping the iPad. The reason I got it is for preventing scratches and because it has a place for the Apple Pencil to be carried while the iPad is in the Magic Keyboard. Also, the case is thin enough to click onto the Magic Keyboard without issue. The Magic Keyboard has been really useful to me. It turns the iPad into a mini computer with keyboard and trackpad. Most of the time, I use this for traveling instead of bringing a laptop. When I'm at home, which is most of the time, I place my iPad in this metal stand from Amazon. I've had it for a few years and I still like it. It's very adjustable, but does not easily move, which is perfect for my needs. I prop it up high to use in the kitchen, but can also position it to be optimal for writing and drawing. It has rubber feeties on the bottom, so it won't move around on the table. The one thing to keep in mind about this stand is that the little holders might get in the way of your wrist when writing. I haven't had an issue with this, but it's something to consider. Let's get into what I use on my iPad, starting with the lock screen in my at home mode or do not disturb focus mode. I keep it really simple with just a background photo of my office, a weather widget in the top left, and under that, this little dancing Tamagotchi guy. This is a widget from the Widgie app, which I'll talk more about later. And then above the time, I also have the date customized with this little coffee icon, also done with the Widgie app. Getting into my home screen, I also keep this pretty empty. I use the shortcuts app to implement these custom app icons. I'll talk more about that later. In the top left is another widget from Widgie that shows the temperature, date, and what time the sun is going to set. Widgie can only connect to Apple apps and not third-party APIs. Since I usually use Spotify for my music, this won't update the current song in real time, but it will if you use Apple Music. For me, I just put my own icon and text in for the design, but when you tap on it, it does go to my Spotify. Below that on the bottom left is a widget to one of my Notion pages for my recipes. Since I use my iPad in the kitchen the most, this is what I need to pull up to remember how to make stuff. So this is a Notion page I made just with all of my most common meals that I prepare. On the right hand side are the other apps that I'm currently using the most at home while relaxing. The first one is Milanote, my favorite app for mood boarding, taking notes, and sketching ideas. 
When I'm working on projects, I like to glance at my mood boards every once in a while, just while I'm thinking about them. The next one is Pinterest, which can be relaxing or inspiring to browse once in a while. Twitch, which I mostly use to watch Minecraft streams while cleaning the kitchen. And the last one is an app by a health and wellness influencer with some recipes that I'm currently trying out. At the very bottom, this is YouTube, which is my number one most used app, but I don't have to click this icon to open YouTube because I made it so I can tap anywhere on the page to open it. I did this by making transparent widgets with the Widgie app and setting the tap action to open YouTube. That way I can create the spacing I want for my apps, but also easily tap to open YouTube. Again, I'll talk more about that in the setup section of this video. If you swipe from the left, the menu here has some shortcuts. The top is a widget for Notion Calendar, which I've been trying out lately, but I honestly don't like it as much as I like Google Calendar. Below that are shortcuts I made for light scenes in the Hue app. Basically, these change all the lights in my place, and I use them at different times of day. This one, for example, is used for shooting video. This button turns the iPad off because I don't like holding the physical buttons to do it. It, and these two turn the night shift on and off. And then this shows the battery levels of everything on the iPad, Apple Pencil, and headphones when they're connected. Under that, I have a quick connect for my VPN and the firewall that I use. In the top right control center, you can see my two focus modes that I use here, but I don't use these controls to switch between them. And in the shortcuts here, I have light and dark mode, the timer, stage manager, and flashlight. And that's it for the home screen. I usually never use the second page in this focus mode but it's here for easy access the top left is my thermostat in case i need to change it below that is just the normal photos app on the right here are some other apps i use mostly in work mode so i'll talk about them in the next section i use this button to switch into the work focus mode and it also changes from light to dark mode automatically at the same time Now you can see we're in work focus mode, but we'll start from the lock screen. It's the same screen as before, just with a different photo background of my living room. as the weather and the guy and the coffee widget. I wanted to use a dark background and dark mode for this focus mode because I don't want my iPad to be bright when I'm traveling on the plane. Getting into the home screen, it's busier because I keep all my work apps accessible here. The top right is a widget that has Google Calendar, Notion Calendar, and then two airlines widgets. When I have a boarding pass, the information including departure time and gate changes will show up here. Down here is another widget to my main Notion page. This has my to-do list and my main active projects. I use Notion for all my organization, schedule and planning. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a Notion tour, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to do one eventually because my Notion is so helpful to me. Moving on to the apps, we again have Pinterest, Photos, and Milanote, where I'll usually find my reference images for projects. This is Google Drive, where I keep my files. The Lightroom app is my preference for editing photos. I also take photos through Lightroom, but usually on my iPhone. Netflix is here for when I am using this on the plane and I want to watch something. YouTube Studio, which I use to check my channel stats. And this is a shortcut back to Do Not Disturb and it turns light mode back on. This app to the very right is Camrote, which syncs to my Sony camera via Bluetooth. And I can use this to monitor shots while I'm filming something on my Sony camera. The bottom is again YouTube and you can still click on the page to access YouTube. I usually download Minecraft videos to watch on the plane. Left swipe is the same, just in dark mode, and control center is also the same. In work mode, the second page is also important. The top left is a photo widget which hides my Gmail and a Google Maps widget for my travel needs. The right side has the Hue app. I use Philips Hue for all the lighting in my place and this is where I can set up and control the light scenes. The Google Remote Desktop app which I can use to access my computers. Derek is my mini ITX build in the living room but he's sleeping right now. This is my main computer. 
If you want to set this up, all you need to do is download the app and follow the instructions. Uh, below that is the normal Apple settings, then ProtonMail, which is an encrypted email service I use, the Squarespace app to check on the synthetic website, Postscan Mail is a mailing service I use, Firefox is my internet browser of choice, and then Discord to check in with the synthetic Discord members. Now that we've gone over all the apps, let's talk about how I set up the customization for my shortcuts and layouts. The three tools I used for all the customizations are the settings app, the shortcuts app, and a third party app called Widgie. Widgie is my favorite widgets app I've used so far. At the time of recording, it cost a one-time payment of $6 to unlock all the features for the home screen. It has the most functionality I've seen of any widget app because you can build entire widgets from scratch and have them do anything you want. Widgie is kind of intimidating at first, but if you spend a few minutes on it, it gets really fun really fast. They also have good help documentation. In my setup, I used Widgie to create the transparent spacing. Widgie uses screenshots of your background to create a transparent effect so the widgets are not actually transparent. The way it works is you take a screenshot of your blank background by entering jiggle mode and scrolling all the way to a blank page, taking a screenshot, and then you can upload it to Widgie in the transparency setup. You can upload a wallpaper for light mode and one for dark mode, which is great because you can assign focus modes to be in either light or dark mode, which enables you to switch between the wallpapers with one tap. One thing to note is that this will only work in either portrait or landscape mode, but not both at the same time. This is fine for me because I only use my iPad in landscape. After you set up the transparent background, create a new widget in the size that you want. Widgie works like Photoshop or Procreate by adding layers. So you just add a new image layer and then set the background to be your transparent background. You can also add a tab action layer to your widget and assign it to do whatever you want when you tap the widget. This is how I have my blank spaces open YouTube. Save the widget, and then in the Manage tab, you can assign the widget to the correct size slot. You can then choose where on the screen this widget is taking space. Back on the home screen, add the widgets you made. Enter into jiggle mode, tap the plus sign, and go to the widgy widgets, and then scroll to the widget that you want to add. Then all you have to do is position it properly on the screen. You can see here all the blank widgets that I've made for this. If you want to change your wallpaper background, all you would have to do is take a new screenshot and upload it again in the setup transparency. It'll automatically change all your widgets to the new background. In settings, under focus, you can create different focus modes and assign things to happen automatically when you switch between them. In my work focus mode, I have it set up to switch to dark mode automatically when I change to this mode. And in do not disturb, it'll change to light mode. Because of this, when I change focus modes, it will pull the wallpaper from Widgie and automatically change the background. To create custom shortcuts and icons, including the ones I use to switch between focus modes, I use the Shortcuts app. These are all the shortcuts I've made for my different apps. To create a shortcut that switches between focus modes, tap the plus icon. And then in this panel, search for Set Focus. Then choose which focus mode you want to turn on. It will list the focus modes that you created in settings in this dropdown. I'll select to turn on work until turned off. Then rename the shortcut to whatever you'd like. Mine is just called work. Tap again and select add to home screen. This is where you can change the icon. I have a folder with the custom colors I uploaded to use for my icons. Choose the one you want and click add, and that's it. It'll be added to your home screen. I also use the shortcuts app to create these shortcuts that are in the left swipe menu. These are the shortcuts connected to the hue app for my lighting. In shortcuts, you can just make another new one and then search for hue and choose activate a scene. This dropdown will show all the scenes that you've created in the Hue app. Just select the scene you want to activate, name it, and then here, choose an icon you want for it. This time, we're not going to add it to the home screen. Instead, make a folder in the Shortcuts app to group your lighting shortcuts. Then, in your left swipe menu, enter Jiggle Mode and add a widget. Search for the Shortcuts widget, and here you can add the widgets that you've created. After you've added it, you can edit this widget and select the folder that you want.
As you can see, there's a lot you can do to optimize the utility of the iPad and also customize how it looks. I hope you got some inspiration for how to arrange your own devices. Thank you for watching and thanks again to Paperlike for sponsoring the video. See you in the next one. Shrimp nose.